Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is another Power Rangers discussion video. With the full season of Ninja Steel now on Netflix, I thought I'd do a review of the season. In short, it's not my favorite season of Power Rangers, but it is definitely one I enjoyed. If you're a parent, I'd say this is absolutely an age-appropriate show for your child. Uh, the episodes have pro-social messages, the heroes are positive role models, and they only use violence and self-defense or to defend others against evil aliens and fantasy scenarios. But in the end, your child will be the ultimate expert on if they're into ninja steel or not. And the same holds true for adults. No one can tell you if you're going to like this series or not. You really need to watch it and decide for yourself. With all that being said, here's what I think of the series. The Ranger outfits are nothing original, but they look cool and definitely get the job done. I love the Zord fleet for the season. The Zords are incredibly quirky and a ton of fun. The writing is solid, enjoyable stuff for the most part, with some occasional clunky writing on some of the episodes. The season finale was a major misstep, stuffing way too much in one episode and combining that with inappropriate fart jokes and the cheap melodrama of taking away powers we knew the Rangers would just regain next season. However, the season leading up to that finale was a pretty good ride. I found all the Rangers to be likable heroes. Preston's magic was really cool, especially in the episode Presto Changeo. I wish there was an explanation as to why his powers didn't go haywire in later episodes when he wasn't using them to help people, but it, that did open the door to gags that were just too fun not to do, like that wonderful bit with the rabbit in the hat. Levi had a strong debut, and the Aiden arc was fantastic. I love how he tries to stay humble in the face of stardom, and that he picks his duty as a ranger over his personal ambitions. Sarah's my favorite ranger. I love how Sarah is a genius, but she avoids that socially awkward and alienated stereotype for that sort of character. Just because she's smart doesn't mean she can't be beautiful, personable, athletic, and compassionate. All her focus episodes were really strong, and Christiane, who plays Sarah, was always a joy to watch. Calvin and Haley are likable enough. They're regular high schoolers in a normal, identifiable relationship. The point of their character is to be normal, which is fine, but they feel overshadowed in a team filled with ninjas, a super scientist, and a magician. I liked all the backstory established with Brody. I just feel like he needs a more distinct personality. I don't mean he needs to be angsty or needs to look for long-lost family members. I'm glad they avoided those cliches in Ninja Steel. He just needs a bit more character development in my opinion. Mick is among my all-time favorite mentors now. He's smart, funny, big-hearted. He's just a great example of how to do an alien mentor right. His verbal jujitsu, where he makes a ranger realize what they're doing is wrong is always a delight to watch. Princess Vieira had a short, simple, but very solid arc. It reminded me a lot of the story about the man who removed the thorn from the lion's paw, a simple act of kindness that turns a ferocious enemy into a friend, and of course that's appropriate for a lion-themed princess. I really hope to see her again in a story exploring what happened after she returned to the Lion Galaxy. I think there's a lot of fascinating possibilities there. Redbot was likable, but he needed more backstory. We know how Mick and Brody got on Galvanax's ship, so how about we give Redbot some history? The monsters were a mixed bag visually, but there were some cool looking ones, including the main villains. Some of the monsters gave the rangers an interesting challenge, but nothing overly groundbreaking. The main villains got a great episode in Presto Changeo, which delved into how the Galaxy Warriors show affected how the villains handled the rangers. Unfortunately, very little of that was seen in the rest of the season. We got buzz cams and audience scenes to acknowledge Galaxy Warriors existed, but it never had any real effect on the story after that. The subplot with Odious manipulating Galvanax against Ripcon did continue, but it was done in a way that took out everything that was unique about those characters and made them interchangeable with all the other villains who've done this plotline in previous seasons. And Galvanax unfortunately ended up being sorely underdeveloped before he met his end in the incredibly overstuffed season finale. Victor and Monte are by far the worst thing in the entire show. 
They're an unfunny waste of space that eats up valuable time that the show needs for character and plot development, action scenes, etc. I do want to give the show props for showing a modern, colorful, inviting Gates Foundation style high school that I rarely see in pop culture. And one of the things I really enjoyed about the show was the slice of life stuff that actually happens with teenagers. Sarah trying to do every club at once to impress college recruiters. Calvin delaying getting his license and no one noticing it because Haley drove his truck. Preston wanting to be an entertainer while his dad wants him to work at the family business. A spontaneous youth protest to protect a local landmark. None of it is necessary in a show like this, but it's still a very nice touch that's deeply appreciated, at least by this adult viewer. The episode Hack Attack in particular really resonated with me. First of all, it's just a really well-made episode, from Christiane's performance to little details like all the Sarahs having individual personalities. I think everyone's wish they could be in multiple places at one time like that, and I've definitely known women in college, including my girlfriend at the time, who did exactly what Sarah tried to do, taking on too many classes and clubs at one time. The scene where the Sarah clones are literally pulling her in different directions is such a beautiful analogy for that situation. Hack Attack was my favorite episode of the last five years and just meant the world to me personally. I want to thank everyone involved in making that episode. Overall, there were a few decent fight scenes in the season, but for the most part, the non-Zord action scenes weren't very good in both the Sentai and American footage. Same goes for some of the CG effects, especially the distractingly fake explosions. Overall, it's not one of my favorite seasons, but it's definitely one I enjoyed. After sitting through 44 episodes of a Power Rangers series I absolutely didn't like with Dino Charge, it was nice to finally enjoy the show again. It came at a good time for me personally. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff in my life, both professionally and personally. It was just nice to take a break from all that and sit down and watch something I enjoy for half an hour every week. And at the end of the day, that really is the point of a decent TV show. Ninja Steel was the first of two seasons for that series. The second season, Super Ninja Steel, is currently airing on Nickelodeon, and in my opinion, improves on the first season. The last episode before the hiatus will be episode 8, which airs this weekend, and the summer hiatus will probably run through late August. Alright, that's it. Like and subscribe for more videos, and until next time, show's over, ninjas win.